they've come down a long way to present and I think we, what we need to do is to hear everybody, let's try and decolonise ourselves within this room and let's set an agenda on a pathway to revolution, revolutionising this whole movement and take an action rather than talk about it. Okay? We've got the legal framework, let's use it. Uh, what a uh, I'd like to pay respects to the traditional owners on whose land we stand and uh, acknowledge the elders and uh, those here today and all the visitors and whatever and uh, also everybody else. Thank you very much. Uh, there you go. They say there's two type of Aboriginal people, short ones and tall ones. Well, I come from out right out the bush there. Um, we come from the tall people. I'm the shortest of my family, so... Yeah, look. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, my father and grandfather and great-grandfather comes from out of Claremont Way. And that country is called Wangan Country. And uh, west of there is the, uh, the Galilee Basin. That's the, called the Jagalingu Country. It goes all the way to the Great Divide and Range. And uh, that's where the Wangan Jagalingu uh, country is. But uh, there's two more entities. One is the Baban Burra, which is a bottle tree. That's my father, grandfather. We belong to the bottle tree, Baban. And uh, on the western side there in my great-grandmother's country, where the Baliando is and the Kamapa River, that's the Wakil Burra. That's the eel. So when you see that eel, you go from fresh water to salt water. So I've been telling that dreaming story from there all the way out to the Pacific Islands, to all the South Sea Islands, everywhere. And then you come back up and, and to tell that story that way, back in the, into the fresh water. So this is the, the land there where we talk about that one. It's called the, we call it Gondolu, that's the emu, that's, that's that, uh, the totem there. And also the tree there, that's the, um, the Mameluka and the Gigi, they're the totem trees on that country there with the Carmichael. So that's my little bit of introduction. And so um, people sort of have an idea where I'm coming from. And on my uh, father, grandfather's side, uh, my skin name was Gargila. Um, and uh, we speak that Wurdi language. That's like the, you know, the Binang and the Yinang and the Mala and the Kata and the Dili and the, you know, that's that Wurdi language. It goes all the way up to the East Coast, out there with the, with the uh, Barat Urbana, you go to Kangaloo, all, all the way out to Wiri, and then you go back up this way with Biri, then you come back in that way through Jango country up the top of us, and over to the west there, we've got the, uh, we've got the um, Inangai people underneath us, the Bidjara, and then from that river, that goes all the way down, sure. through Bidjara, all the way to Kalali, which is my mother's side, um, and then, uh, all the way down to other fellows. So when we tell that story from the headwater there, we have uh, 10 springs that are close to the Carmichael um, project of the Adani project. And 10 natural springs, they've been living, surviving there since day one. Just like our law from day one, since time immemorial, never ever changed. The species of life that are there found in them springs they can't be found anywhere else in the world. We got like a um, piece of um, waxy cabbage palm right there in the middle, nowhere out there. It's, uh, you can only find them there, nowhere else in the world. So this is a special place here. It's a special dreaming place. We've got ochre deposits every day, everywhere there. And so this is a very special place uh, where my ancestors are. And so we have a uh, since um, 2012, since the, um, the 40th anniversary, I went back to my people and said, okay, we form a tribal council. Of all of the 12 families, the, uh, the, the apicals that come from that country, this is not native title. We just come and meet together and we stood and said, no, no one's going to have our country. There's not going to be any mining. There's not going to be no taking of our water unless we say so. And so we've told them this. I made a, um, a statement of claim to the state government, to the federal government, to the mining company, 
And anybody else who, who wants to come on our country, we said you can't have it. You can't have the water, because that's a part of our dreaming, which is we call Mundinjara, like the, the Munda Mundinjara. Um, that's their dreaming day. And uh, that's come straight from the water and it runs through down to the valley and down there to the uh, bird again. So we told them this. And so they're a little bit scared about it, see? Because we told them, I've been listening to Michael talk about this here, see? When you hear this like, what your totem is, we say, well, we don't kill that totem. Well, that's the law. What do they want to know? Well, we didn't kill something. Why? Because there was a law. And so that law was already here. It was there since the beginning. We don't have to try and prove it to them. You can walk out there and you can see all them kangaroos and emus. You can see all them walking around out there. All them totems that them black holes didn't eat out there. And my father started like San Juana. So, this is what I told them. And they said, the native turtle said, oh, we're interested in finding out what, uh, uh, what, um, what might be impacted by this mine. The largest mine in the southern hemisphere. 40 kilometers long, 13 kilometers wide. Two undercut mines. The water table was 400 meters down. Once they hit the water table, they will poison all the aquifers. They will destroy every single country from the headwater all the way down into Gumara country. All that water will be poisoned by that mine. They will, they will destroy it. all that central country there turned it into inland desert. Those springs will be gone forever. Life as we know in our existence will cease to exist. We will, we'll, be, we'll be wiped away altogether. There will be no story to go back to. And so the native title tribunal said, well, you show us then. And then, because as Michael said before, there's two Bob Murrays come along, you know? And uh, what they want? They want an outside influence, an outside experience. A mining company come to them and say, listen, because we already said no, here, yeah, they're going to try and buy them back in. They try and buy their way back into our people. They get the two Bob Murray and they say, come here, we'll give you some sitting fees. You'll sign, re-sign the Iliwa. Never before in the history of Australia, they come to Blackfellas and ask them two, three, four times to sign the Iliwa. They kept coming to us because we said no twice. We're still saying no from the council. And so them two Bob Murrays come along. They ignore everything. Everything that's been said here today. They ignore it. You know why? They want their little 20 cent. Or 20, or, you know? Five cent extra. You know? You don't have to be a hero or a warrior, you know what I mean, to sign the Iliwa. Anyone can sign the Iliwa, but it's those that stand up against the British colonial system and eagle eagle laws and fraud. And these are the things I told them, but they don't want to listen. So we then, uh, we then appeal to the federal court. Justice Reeves says, no, he doesn't, he doesn't want me to go to the tri tribunal with my... Um, with, with my statement of claim. So then we put an appeal in. We're going to the full bench of the federal court. And that will let me get back there to the Native Title Tribunal. Then we're going to do the cultural mapping. But these are the things that we're going to, we're going to go through. That's the process. But you're standing outside that Native Title process. We could, be just, we could be yelling sovereignty, sovereignty forever and ever. But they're not going to listen until you, you get in there and you just you start using that system. I'm trying to exhaust every single avenue that I can in that process so I can show our people that it's a lie, it's a fraud, it's a deception. And you're never going to have a win through that process of trying to fight them through that native title process, trying to stop um, illuers and trying to stop the um, um, right to negotiate. Because even those lawyers, I only found this out, our lawyer was telling us, oh, look, you can't challenge your compulsory acquisition. Andrew Chalk. Oh, you can't challenge a compulsory acquisition. You can if they take a native title and give them to a private company. That's unconstitutional. We had, a, we, had a, we had a high court challenge against the state government, never before. They were planning to take compulsory acquisition of 2,700 hectares to build a town, Ardani town, 
And then our mob come along too, Bob mob, and come along and said, nah, well, we want to sign the Yulia, right? They don't want to have a challenge to the High Court and take the first case ever in Queensland against the state government, giving compulsory acquisitions to a dummy. No, no, they just want some sitting fees. They just want a couple of little dollars or a job in the mine driving a bus. You know, this is, this is what we've got to contend with. But you know, what's the point of it? It's the pie in the sky here all the time. Pie in the sky. They're leading their people on all the time. Because they, as Michael said, in those little clauses there, it says, oh, you can't challenge it. If you don't get your money, you can't challenge them. You can't get lawyers and take them to court. <laughs> Some people have been waiting for years and years to get their little bread and butter, you know, from you. was. So, that's just, oh, I was only supposed to introduce myself, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't want, I didn't want to say too much, but, <laughs> it, you know, like, um, I went away from here, like, uh, you know, on, the, you know, 2012, from the 40th anniversary, I went away with a passion. I went away with trying to set something right, you know, and forming my own tribal council. The real people that speak for country, the real people that have passion for, for land, that speak for the land. And when these Murrays come up here, two Bob Murrays saying, well, you don't speak for me. I say, listen here, brother, I'm speaking for the land. I'm speaking for my ancestors that are still there calling out to us, telling us, yeah, you're going to look after this place now. Don't worry about like whether I speak for you. Here's Johnny come later anyway. Put your name on a claim ticket or somebody. Like, come on now. And say, they, all these people say, well, if, if you speak for a country, you'll be saying something. Not sitting back on, here, where's the sitting fee? You'd be standing up saying, no, no way, you can't come on my country. And if we all stood together, and just like the New Guinea mob, they say one talk, if we had that one talk, we all talk the same thing, they're not going to be able to get around us. But it's like little chatter here, little chatter there, and someone talking over here, and when they ask someone, oh, it's all right here. Just give me free lunch. <laughs> And sitting fees. And travel money. I'm, I'm sorry, but you know, there's seriousness in it as well. You know? Because uh, they're dealing with our spirituality, and they can't get past that. All of anthropologists, they don't understand it. Because we're the walking spirit people. They don't understand. They're looking at it from a piece of paper. Every single piece of paper I see, a document, that's a fiction. It's a fiction, it's not real. You and us walk near blood, soul, look, spirit, we're, we're, we're real. Well, you see, it's real. When they send you that thing there, look, you've got to pay that bill. It's a fiction. <laughs> because we come from moral culture, right? You tell me, I tell you, tell the next person, and we talk the same talk. They're confusing us. They're confusing them, two Bob Murrays. But you know, that wasn't my speech, sorry. I just, I did have a, a speech prepared, Michael, but. You know, it's better for me, it's better. Can I, I just, can I just like, um, this is the first opportunity I've had to talk about like, you know, our campaign. It's been massive and you've probably seen a lot of, uh, a lot of media stuff. We've got like a media machine. People are just, move, they just, people come along, they want to help us. Yeah, for good, brother. We need all the help we can get to stop him. Uh, he's a very, very persistent man. He likes a challenge. So whatever we throw at him, he's going to keep coming back. So um, I've noticed that that's, a, that's the kind of man he is. And, you know, for us, hey, it's not a matter of whether we win or lose. It's the fight. We wake up every day just to fight. You can win, but I'm fighting. That gives us the reason to get up every day. But we've got crowdfunding to go all around every single, all the banks in the world. We went to five different countries. We talked to the Import Export Bank, 
We talked to Citibank, Bank of America. We went to, we went to Canada, talked to the people from the Tar Sands. We went, uh, we went to Standard Chartered. We went to Switzerland. We talked to all the bankers said, don't give this fellow any money. Because we said no. And we even went to the National Australia Bank and they said no. We won't give them any money. Because you know what? They said that, we said to them, the traditional owner said, we said, you can't have our country. And that bank said, well, we're not going to give them any money. That's the secret that I'm telling you. If you can't run, you can't, these mining companies come along and, they, and they're not a viable company, they can't get any money to start a business, then the NATO title tribunal shouldn't give them a mining lease. That's what we think log logically, ain't. Eh? You know, that's all smoke and mirror, yeah? So hopefully, by coming to the sovereign union, I've come a couple of times and never had the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> but I've listened a lot. And so, uh, my assistant's telling me I've got to play the video now because we've got a video on, on, the, on the website and on Facebook. And uh, it's just, we're not going to stop. We're challenging them on all different levels. So, uh, and if that doesn't work, we'll just have to declare sovereign independence. As so we come from the dreaming. We cut me all, see? There's the video anyway, look, I'm not going to talk anymore. <laughs> you can ask me a question after. Yeah. We come from the dreaming. We come from the beginning of time, from the water spirit which gave us life, the creator which gave us everything. We are only here because of that. And we are here surviving on this planet, on this continent now, because we are Aboriginal people connected with our land. Once that land is gone, once it's destroyed, there's nothing. We will cease to exist. 18 months ago, our people came together and said no to mining giant Adani. They want to dig up the car mine, the biggest coal mine in Australian history, on our country. We told them we will not let them take away our rights and destroy our land. We'll take their shut up money and go home. They didn't listen. So in March 2015, we launched our public campaign to defend our traditional homelands from Adani's destruction. Our people have organized, we've rallied. We've joined together to let the world know about the fight that we have here in Australia and in Queensland and the tremendous task that it is to take on a mining company when we know that the legislation in this country is stacked against us. We took our fight to the community, to the media, to the parliament. We alerted the UN to the trampling of our rights. Over 100,000 people stood with us. Our supporters helped us to travel to the boardrooms of the world's biggest banks so we can get the message to them in person that we do not consent to this devastating mine and that it's bad investment and that they should not fund it. Many banks call that spoil the dying. We met with Standard Chartered as they came out and said publicly they will no longer be funding a dying or any part of the Carmichael. We also met with First Nations people who share our struggle. They now stand strong with us. We know the disastrous effects the release of this carbon from the Carmichael mine would have on a global scale. In the federal court, we exposed the Darnian lives about jobs and benefits and their disregard for us as people and for the things we hold sacred and dear. We showed how the native title tribunal was duped by these lies and ran roughshod over our rights. But the Darnian are relentless bullies and are supported by the Queensland and federal governments. And today, they are still pushing to go ahead and destroy our homelands with their coal mine. They will stop our dreaming. Where will the song go? What will the song be? There'll be nothing left. We're showing up, we're stepping up, we're taking on the fight. The last 18 months has been the biggest fight of our lives. We are still here, and no still means no. Now is the time for us to stand stronger than ever, to step up to the fight. We're protecting the Bungus and Jagalingu country from irreversible destruction, from complete devastation. We will continue to fight against the Adani Carmichael Mine. To stay strong so that Adami and their governments finally understand. When we say no, we mean no.
<laughs> but what we're going to do, Adrian not going to be that, he's not going to get away that easy. But um, later on, if we got some questions, we got a couple more speakers. But um, you want to ask a question? We get a couple of questions in, and then we go on with our speakers. But tomorrow we got a workshop all this year here on this floor. We have got to take this action. going on is that we have, we have um we have like um people, the native there's a native title claim going on but um what we've done is we've established a um a tribal council that consists of the the the, 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 the 12 families but we're not under the native we're not under native title and this decision that we made we've made it as 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 a, a standard sovereign people not ceding our sovereignty aside from native title they, they have the native title group, but that's just um, that's separate from what we're doing. You see, this is the, this is the problem. They're trying to yeah. Sorry. Are you part of the native title group? Um, I'm still like an applicant on it. Yeah, but um, I'm the spokesperson for the family council. The family council are um, people, traditional owners. So they're trying to they try and mix us in with the with the native title process. You see, when I went to when I went to the court and faced Justice Reeves, he said, "Well, you're not the native title party, and under the native title process, they couldn't actually define what is a native title party: applicants, all the whole group, or just the subgroup, or what they couldn't define what it was because the native title legislation is too much of a grey area, and that's something that they couldn't define." who could actually challenge a mining lease. So we, we are traditional owners that are speaking for country, not as native title applicants or claimants. One more question. said no as a tribal council, then no means no. You're not going to get that in your But under the, under the Native Title Act, the mining companies only have to enter into um, negotiations with the Native Title Party with the Illuers, and if they refuse, then they give it anyway. They'll get, a, um, get the consent to do, do the mining anyway, irrespective of, of us agreeing to the Illuers. Yeah. Uh, the... the the Native Title Party, who's actually re-entered into a negotiation with it or, and, and signed an ancillary agreement, um, we're challenging that process. We're challenging the Ilua and we're challenging those applicants. But um, because they still have to go back to acknowledge, acknowledge me as someone that comes from that country saying that there's totems and there's animals dreaming that that mine's going to affect, they still have to answer me. I'm not just... I'm not just I don't belong to a whole group of people. I'm someone who comes from there who can speak for that country. Not native title, not any, I'm, I'm a sovereign guy. And what I'm saying, I'm using that process to say, you have to acknowledge that there are certain things on that country there that you can't touch. Now, regardless of what the native title, the native title process, native title says to me, look, um, we, we won't give the mining lease to them bec because it's going to affect your law, then I would have won. But those are the native title people that are there. They want to cede everything, sign the Iluas, and not even because they can't speak for country because they don't know the totems. They don't know law, language, song, dance, anything. They don't even have. Well, they, they can't even sing a song. This is, this is the problem. If I have a belief in something, it may be a religious belief, it may be a spiritual belief, it is absolute. I don't need a group of people. My belief in my dreaming in my ancestor spirits that's in that land is absolute. No one can override that. 
That's the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's absolute. It's my belief. Now, they have to, they have, they have to, they have to challenge whether this is real or not. 